thank you so much, friends, colleagues, people who need to change their minds about things. Uh, uh, we spent three weeks in Fiji in March, and we were in the field the entire time. And my presentation is to do with some of the erosional problems we found that were being blamed on rising sea level. And we discovered it was no such thing. These are two pictures of Fiji that are so beautiful, one gets to see them. <laughs> um, the main island here of um, Vitalivu, this is where Nandi is and Suva, the uh, capital. And this is where the government is. And this is where the stories of uh, climate refugees and sinking islands, it's all coming from here. When we decided to do our work, we went up here to the Asawa Islands. And as you can see, they are quite a ways away from the main island. And they really do not have much to do with the Fijian government. The people who live in the Asawas are true Fijian people. They live in villages that are autonomous. The government gives them next to nothing and they expect nothing from the government. They're basically a subsidence uh, existence. They live off the sea and what they can sell. So this is the first place we visited. Uh, this was right outside our hotel in Denaru. This is also on Vitalivu. The beach here not only is not eroding away, you can see the vegetation is encroaching down onto the shore. This is the uh, beach morning glory, Ipamea. Here we have um, rocks that were farther up the beach. The yellow line shows the uh, dead patellas that were once alive, and below the red line are the living patellas. This is an obvious indication that sea level has gone down a little bit here, and the beach is certainly not in danger. This is a different story. As we moved south from the, um, the very top of the Asawas from Bukama, the word got around. We were quite a curiosity. Two crazy European people wandering around getting sunburnt and looking at beaches and rocks and hiring locals and passing out kava. So the word spread. And when we got down to this point, they were asking us, please come look at our village, Yageta village. Please come and look. Tell us what is wrong if we can fix it. Now, we had seen this on the Google Earth maps, this large concentration of sediment at the north end. This is Yageta village here, and this is their lagoon. And they have no sand anymore in front of their lagoon, but they used to have these animals. These are sea cucumbers, Holothurius gabra, and they exude a sticky substance that makes the sand cling to them. And here's one in the very middle. It's a little bit harder to see, but I'm not getting my, uh, there it is. Uh, this little creature, I had scraped his sand off and he was going to burrow down and get sandy again. Well, we looked at their beach and we couldn't find any obvious mechanical difficulties. No groins, no seawalls. There was no river coming in that they had fiddled with. It was basically an untouched beach. And it was quite a mystery to us. And it, we happened to be talking to the chief of this village. And he said, you know, about nine years ago, we harvested these animals and sold them to the Chinese to make into mesh de bear, um, beche de mer, sorry. <laughs> Apparently a delicacy in China. And they had so many animals, they could not walk on their lagoon without stepping on them. 
So the village went out with baskets, all ages. They picked up as many as they could and sold them all to the Chinese. As they removed the animals, the beach started to move away from their, their front. And then this is what we saw when we got there. Many coconut palms had gone over. This had nothing to do with Winston the typhoon the year before. This was purely because the sand has moved north. So there was, we couldn't really give them a solution that they could do. Um, they need a dredge. They need to get that sand from the north and bring it back to the village. And this would involve getting help from their government. Their government is not inclined to help. These people have very little influence on government. I doubt if they even vote. So we left them feeling very bad that we couldn't really help. But at least they now know what they did. This other beach here, you'll, you can't miss the, the seawalls and the groins. They're all along here. There's one here. I have several there. Uh, this is Long Sandy Beach. At low tide, they have a very long, wet, sandy beach. At high tide, the dry beach is right here. That's a lawn chair. And it's sitting on dry sand. And all of the rest of that is wet. And at high tide, the waves lap on the, um, the lawn chair. They decided they needed to stabilize their beach for some reason. And they built the seawalls and the groins and very good, solid ones, actually. And um, before they knew it, they had less beach than before. There is a, um, a gyre system. There's a very narrow channel here between Long Sandy Beach. You can walk across it easily. And Goat Island. And you can see the current is whipping through here and here and it has removed the sand from behind the, um, the groin and the seawall. And it is now possible at low tide to walk across the lagoon. It's about knee deep or less. And people do it, the locals do it all the time. They walk back and forth. Um, it's unfortunate, but once again, this is not sea level rise. This is human ignorance or uh, lack of information. They tried to do something, and they were unsuccessful. So basically, our conclusions are that erosion in the Fiji Islands is not caused by sea level rise, but by human error. Sea level in the area has been stable for the past 50 years, and Nicholas will explain that much more. And any proposed changes to local shoreline should be studied carefully taking into consideration local benthic faunal populations and oceanic current conditions. So far, this has not been done. The market for uh, sea cucumbers, beche de mer, is huge. The Chinese buy everything they can get. They have forced the natives to go out and dive in dangerous deep waters in order to get different species. They're growing them in mariculture areas. So it is possible to get um, spawn and repopulate an area. But again, this is money that these people simply don't have. So those are our friendly Fijians waving us goodbye. And we are very grateful to them for all that they did for us.